So in this video, we're gonna tackle the last electromagnetic boundary condition, uh, and that's the normal component of the, well, that's not an H, uh, the normal component of the magnetic field. So we've dealt so far with the electric field in its entirety, and so if we've got some object, uh, we now know if you've got some, if we know the electric field on one side of the object, uh, some arbitrary E, you can decompose it into its tangential components, uh, tangential to the surface, and its normal component, uh, which is perpendicular to the surface. And so now we're going to deal finally uh, with the last of Maxwell's equations and the last of the boundary conditions involving the magnetic field. So we're going to do just what we did before. We're going to zoom in on a very small section of the surface. And in this case, it's a we're, we're gonna zoom in on a two-dimensional section because we want to integrate over a volume. Um, so we're gonna have, in general, some permittivity uh, outside of the material. Often that will be free space, but not always. And then some permittivity inside the material. It's also got some permeability outside the material and some permeability inside the material. And so if you've been watching the previous videos, you'll notice that we've used three out of four of Maxwell's equations. The only one we haven't used and the only boundary condition we have left is Gauss's law for magnetism. So the B field integrated over some surface is equal to zero. Now we'd like to construct a surface just as before uh, that only has a normal component to it. And so we, we did that in previous videos by saying, let, okay, let's use this uh, somewhat imaginary cylinder. So we've got, actually, let me make this, this line solid. The solid is above the uh, material one. The dashed lines are penetrating into the material. And so we said if we have this cylinder and we've got some magnetic field, uh, or in general, if we have this cylinder, we have some magnetic field. Uh, as we shrink the height of this cylinder, so the cylinder has some height h. As we shrink the height more and more and more, the only component of the magnetic field that we're going to be integrating is the component that's pointing straight up. So the component, the normal component of the magnetic field. Because the area that we're integrating over these sides, so along the edges of the cylinder, um, gets smaller and smaller and smaller until we make uh, h approach zero at which point we don't care at all about the the component that's pointing off to the side. So that's sort of why we're justified in only thinking about the normal component of the magnetic field, because we're making the, uh, the integral involving the tangential component zero by making the height of the cylinder smaller and smaller and smaller until it approaches zero. Well, okay, by now you know the drill. If you've watched the previous videos, uh, we've got some magnetic field above, and or magnetic flux density, if you prefer, uh, and some magnetic field below, or B norm one and B norm two. And so we just carry out the integral on this first surface, and we'll get B norm one uh, times some area. Uh, we, we're assuming again that the magnetic field is constant over this area, which is true as long as we choose a small enough area over which to deal with. Uh, and then uh, integrating over the second area, since the normal component is uh, of the surface is pointing in the opposite direction, we need to have a minus sign here. So minus B norm two times the same area, because this is a cylinder. And uh, just as, as a side note, we, we used a cylinder just because it's pretty. Uh, you could have also used a cube. Uh, you could have used a rectangular prism. You could have used anything where the area on the top uh, is gonna be the same as the area on the bottom, because that's uh, that that needs to be true in order for this uh, this these boundary conditions to make sense, because we don't have, we don't want artificial areas floating around. Um, and this is all equal to zero. So we can divide by the area, rearrange this equation, and we'll just get that the normal component of the magnetic field on one side is equal to the normal component of the magnetic field on the other side, or the magnetic flux density. Um, if you want it in terms of the H field, uh, also sometimes called confusingly the magnetic field, um, the conventions aren't aren't clear as to what is actually what. 
but let's say the the h field uh, so mu b is in a linear material is just equal to mu h so mu1 times the normal component of h1 is just equal to mu2 times the normal component of h2 and so uh, these two equations and this one in particular is the most rigorously correct um, this one is correct for linear materials which almost everything is a linear material unless you're working in some fancy schmancy lab um, or working with high energies or doing other other stuff that you don't normally see in the everyday world um, but there's a an even more useful form which you'll you'll encounter more in electromagnetics because most materials aren't magnetic so mu1 in general uh, is equal to mu2 which is equal to mu naught the permeability of free space and this isn't always true but most for most materials it's it's very very close to being true and when this is the case then the normal component of our h field on one side is just equal to the normal component on the other side and that's really nice because we we have the normal component being equal we also said previously that the tangential component of the magnetic fields were equal and so if we have non-magnetic materials we just have that h1 is equal to h2 uh, assuming that we have non-magnetic materials and our surface current is zero but those are generally generally speaking true and so now we have boundary conditions for the electric field the tangential component and the normal component we have boundary conditions for the magnetic fields tangential component and the normal component so we have everything we need uh, to do pretty much any electromagnetics that we want. So you'll use these boundary conditions in dealing with uh, waveguides, in dealing with uh, really any sort of reflection of waves off surfaces. Uh, you can use them to set up uh, like really any electromagnetics problem that you want uh, and figure out if you've got some electric field distribution or some charge distribution, uh, what your subsequent field looks like when you've got these nasty objects sitting in your way. So I'm gonna summarize these real quick below so that uh, you have a, a reference of it. So for the electric field, uh, we said that the tangential components, or we found out that the tangential components had to be equal. Uh, for the normal components, so epsilon one, E one, or E normal one, minus epsilon two, E normal two, uh, we found out that these had to be equal to the surface charge density sigma. And similarly for the tangential components of the uh, magnetic field, so h tan 1 minus h tan 2, this had to be equal to the surface current. And for the magnetic flux density, or the, the video that we just talked about, uh, mu 1 times h norm 1, minus mu2 or actually it's just equal to mu2 times h norm 2 because we don't have any source terms on the right hand side so if you want tricks to try and remember these uh, i just remember the tangential fields as being by themselves because they don't have any uh, material properties out front and the normal components uh, involving the material properties so the mu's and the epsilons um, and I usually just uh, look at Maxwell's equations to figure out whether I need to include the surface charge density or the surface current uh, on on the right hand side so I don't recommend that you memorize uh, these um, these boundary conditions because you can very quickly get them from uh, Maxwell's equations so uh, just just using the the arguments that we just made if you get fast enough at it you can just uh, look at the equations be like oh okay that's my boundary condition and then go from there so I hope you enjoyed the video uh, if you did please give it a like down below and subscribe to my channel uh, also if you have any questions or comments please feel free to post those down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can and thanks for watching I'll see you next time